I think one of the biggest pain points that we, we used to have was it was just really hard to get an answer for the question of who owns this thing. A lot of that was either trying to find it buried in those confl confluence pages or it was going around Slack and asking, hey, hey, do you all own this? So Ops Level really helped us standardize that and centralize that ownership in a way that made it easier for somebody to go in and say, hey, give me this service and tell me who owns it. And then they can get right to that person, right to their Slack channel. Never really standardized a definition of, uh, of service health. And then once Ops Level came along, we were able to um, define that a little bit more clearly and put it into common terms that everybody could talk about. Uh, and that was really useful from uh, just a, a definition perspective of service health. One of the interesting things about Ops Level is it can also create some uh, healthy competition between teams. Uh, we found that as soon as we, we had rolled it out and put all the services in, uh, a couple teams started gunning for that first platinum service, and, uh, and it was really fun to see them kind of, you know, invest in their services in a way that was with both was both productive for the uh, the service health, but also in a in a lightweight, uh, friendly competition way. So we did some investigation and, and research into equivalent um, equivalent solutions uh, along with Ops Level, and found that uh, some of them were uh, either a lot harder to set up or would require a lot more ongoing commitment from one of our teams to to stand up and maintain and invest the time into. And ops level comparatively was a lot easier to get off the ground and get running. Um, we just needed to make sure we understood how we define service metadata and, and get enough alignment around how we wanted to use the rubric and then everything just kind of falls into place.